Oh. Not sure how to start this video because I don't know if it's going to go up. I don't know if it's just for me. I don't know if I'm putting it out here, but welcome to my closet. If I do decide to put this up, otherwise this is just going to be a little video diary dump for myself. So my little closet is like my safe space in the house. I mean, I feel safe in the house, but this is just like my space. It's only mine. It belongs to no one else. I can make it as messy as I want, which it is right. I mean, this is like organized. Usually the pile is a lot higher. There's a big pile over here. It's fine. It's like where I can truly just, I don't have to put anything away if I don't want to. It's lovely. Not that I'm very good at putting things away outside of the closet either, but <laughs> if I don't get to it, then babe will. <laughs> Whereas in here, he can't touch it. And so I, when we first moved into the house, I would come in here and just lay on the floor because it felt so comfortable because it's so small. And I have been having a difficult time adjusting to having a big house. You would think it would be easier going from a camper into a house, but for me, it's been a lot harder, actually. I just feel like, oh gosh, I just feel like the walls, because they don't move and because there's so much space to fill, it just feels smaller. And I'm getting, I'm starting to wrap my head around the fact that we live in a house. We don't live in the camper anymore. We do have the camper for adventures still, but we live in a house now. And I was really excited about it when we first moved back because Babe was supposed to go back into the office. We were gonna go look into fostering and this was gonna be the perfect house to do that. And then we got back and we actually started getting settled in the house and he didn't have to go back to work. He, they postponed sending people back into the office and so he's been home. It's been four plus months now, maybe almost six months. I, I don't know. We moved in in January. It's June. Yeah. Okay. Six months, four months, six months. However, I don't know the math. Um, and the whole time, I think because we, he didn't have to be back in the office and we didn't technically have to be back settled. I just, my head could not tell myself that I was staying. I was like, we can go back out on the road. It's fine. And I was like, well, if we go back out on the road, that takes foster care off the table. You have always said you were going to try that. And you know what? Sometimes life changes, but it changed again. So Babe just got a new job and he will actually be in an office like every day. And I know that that doesn't like that's supposed to be normal. But what is normal? I don't love normal. And I'm really, really excited for him, but I know it'll change just a lot of the dynamics. And I've got to find something for myself outside of the house because my job is all remote. I can work in the house. And a lot of times I just stay in my PJs all day and I work, which is lovely as a work option, but not always so lovely for my mental health. So I have got to find something out of the house at least a couple days a week, maybe just one or two that will help me be around people. I like my alone time, but I also really like to be around people. So I am going to look into that. I, but I just feel, I don't know how I feel. I don't know how I feel about living in a house still. I don't know if I want to just say, come on, let's just, we loved being in the camper. Let's throw it all back in and just go back into the camper. But then part of me is like, well, did you really love it that much? I mean, you know, you loved it, but was it going to be sustainable super long term? Or are you just really thinking you want to do it for the rest of your life, or at least for the long foreseeable future, because right now you feel stuck. And so that's just where I am. But I took the first step to opening or potentially opening our home to fostering and 
reached out and called about starting paperwork. So I, at this point, I'm just kind of taking it a step at a time. I, at one point had been like, okay, by the end of this month, you're going to have signed up for foster care classes, but I didn't do it. So then the next month I said, you at least just have to talk to someone to figure out all the information. And so really, if you are looking into doing fostering, the first step is just reaching out to someone. And the way it works in Florida, I actually spoke with the liaison first, and then they uh, get you connected with the point person in your county. And then that person gives you the paperwork you need and information you need to um, get signed up for classes. So did that. She connected us via email. The woman from the county office um, sent, it was just, it's just three forms, at least where I am, a uh, fingerprint form uh, to run a background check and then sign up to get your fingerprinting done. And then kind of just like an informational form. It just asks a little bit about your, you know, home setup, your family setup, how many bedrooms you have, if you have any pets, if you have any children or anyone else living in the house. Um, it asks kind of your intentions for what ages you might want um, to foster or be open to fostering, why you're wanting to foster. It Just two pages and it was actually really quick. And then the other one is a privacy policy statement thing, just giving permission to do your background check and your fingerprinting and all of that stuff. So that took 10, well, 10, 20 minutes. And then I sent in the paperwork. So if you're considering starting looking into foster care, that's something to do. But I feel very weird. I feel weird because we'd always thought, I mean, I've, we've always loved children. When we got married, I mean, even before we got married, me, just myself, my only real goal in life up until the time I was maybe 24 was to be a mother in any capacity. Um, and I mean, I wanted seven kids. That was my number. Seven was the number. Crazy. I, I'm just like, who was that girl? And who knows, maybe we'll end up with seven foster children and that'll be our number. It was actually a, a number that was who knows? Here I am just word vomiting my thoughts. And actually, it's really helping. But I had always wanted to be a mother. The wife, all that other stuff came secondary. But then after we got married, we decided to wait a year to start trying any of those things. And then a year turned into another year, which turned into another year. Um, my, after my brother passed away, uh, that just like threw everything for a loop. And now I'm 35 and at the point where I'm considering not having children in any capacity, whether biologically fostering, if we foster, the intention is just to foster if a foster to adopt situation came up and that was what was best for the child, then we would pursue that avenue. But we're going into fostering with the intention of fostering not only the child that we're um, being given care of for a while, um, but also the family unit that they come from because a lot of the issue is those families don't have a support system. And um, we're really good at loving other people's children it's just something that is real is really easy for us. I don't know if it's because we he comes from a large family. I have siblings that all have babies now. I would have thought, you know, young me would have thought I was going to be the one with all the kids and they were just going to live their little lives. But now it's the reverse and we have helped kind of take care of those kids a lot. Um, and so we're just good at loving other people's children and being able to kind of help with that and 
but we are taking, like I said, we're taking things one step at a time. So if we start going through the foster care classes and are like, maybe this really isn't right for us right now, we won't end up opening our home. We will still complete the classes, I think, just because once you complete the classes, at least in the state of Florida, your class, like finishing your classes, that's good for five years. Within any of those five years, if you want to open your home, you can. So we could do the foster care classes and not end up opening our home. We could open our home a year after we do classes. It just all depends. But for me to be 35 and considering not having children, not fostering, not, you know, biologically having children blows the first 25 years of my life's version of me, like blows her mind. And this version of me is really having a hard time coming to terms with those two things and not really knowing, like, am I just saying I don't know if I want, if I, like, I would be fine not having kids, which is crazy because that was like my biggest fear in life was to not be able to have children. And now I'm like, why do I, you know, at least, especially biologically, why do I need to bring, you know, it's kind of like that the world is real freaking hard sometimes. So why do I want to bring another person into the world that may be like, you know, 40 years down the road? Why'd you bring me into this crazy place? Or, it, like, see, my mind is just whirling with all of the thoughts. But, so I'm trying to not let myself live in fear of that either. Because we can't fear, we can't let ourselves make, make decisions off of fear. So am I not wanting to have children because I'm fearful of their future? or fearful of the way it will change our lives because children will change your lives. If you're comfortable, like we're really comfortable right now. Yeah, I don't necessarily know if I really wanna be in the house, I wanna be back on the road, but otherwise really comfortable. And children gonna change that. Maybe like, and some days it'll change it for the better. Other days you're gonna be pulling your hair out. Raising a human life is hard. Having to be in charge of another person's well-being and care, both physically and mentally, and making sure you're helping them grow up to be a good person in a world that is just awful sometimes. Yeah, it's going to make things real uncomfortable. So that's just where I am. That is how I feel whether this makes it up on anywhere, any platform, or this is just for me. Thank you for listening. Even if I'm just listening to myself, that was very helpful. Yeah. Have a great day.